Click the links to join the channel here over at subscribe strike in the mailbox if you want to uh, put something in the mail. And if you want me to see a movie and review it, just let me know. So the writer strike could doom Hollywood. <laughs> and what exactly is the downside to that? So the SAG uh, strike or the after a stri the writer strike that turned into to a strike across Hollywood uh, they're saying it's the perfect storm for Hollywood because yes, in in perfect storms in many ways. And the the guy who's doing this interview seems to think like, oh no, the people won't get their shows, and we have whatever we do, we can't turn off the programming. Like yeah, it might be a really good idea if this strike went on for a long time. Um, so they said what happened was the um, the Wu flu got people at home for some reason. I guess they I guess they were pussies, and the streaming services invested heavily into um, their infrastructure because people weren't going out to the theaters because I guess they were pussies too. Um, and they need to pay off that investment and the strike is costing them something like $2.4 million a month because the, some of the movies have frozen. That's I mean, $2.4 million a month is nothing to them, but it will balloon in the future if the strike continues because people will eventually unsub from those streaming platforms. And when the strike ends, they have to restart the industry and get back the tens of millions of lost subscribers because those subscribers are expecting their shows to continue next season. It's kind of an addiction for... I mean, some people form these uh, these parasocial relationships with uh, with shows. And I look at the shows and I think they're just not... They're okay to watch, but they're just not that good That where it's not the end of the world if they don't continue. And um, the thing is, if the shows don't continue after the strike, because, you know, every time... Any moment they're striking is well. That's going to cause a delay out in the future. I mean, they can't they can't like double up the work to just write like crazy. Um, so the subscribers are going to be left in a situation where they're paying for a subscription service that ended in 2023. For them, it's better just to save the money for a year. And honestly, it might the longer it goes on, it will the longer it will take to get stuff back to normal. And um, let things get back to normal, then go back to the uh, bread and circuses. And, you know, like, what a perfect time. I mean, Netflix, uh, they cut out their bottom tier of subscriptions, the one that had advertising. So you got to subscribe to the next uh, higher tier, which is probably bad timing for them. Or hopefully, you know, maybe people will discover that some time away from Hollywood <laughs> is a good thing. Heaven forbid, heaven forbid people just turn off that brainwashing just for a few months. The thing is, there's no downside to Hollywood slowing down or even stopping a little bit. Hollywood makes out-and-out out propaganda. Yes, anything anything is someone's view of the world, um, interpretation of things. Um, and in the, once you kind of put on the glasses, the sunglasses, you go back and look at the old stuff you thought was kind of neutral and realize, ah, here's little bits of propaganda left and right. But um, what they what they're doing now, like within the past ten years, is just full full mask off. I mean, this the stuff is insane. So the um, writers are striking, and they're very fairly pointing. Is it? Uh oh, I thought it was my thing for a second. They're really pointing out that the pay discrepancies between the people at the top and the people at the bottom are are huge, and they're right. I mean, they're astronomical. The funny thing is, Hollywood is so insanely far left, but then when it comes time to socialize the distribution of wealth, they explained, yeah, well, that's a bridge too far. We're just not going to do that. Oh, this interview Bob Iger does is insane. He's so out of touch. Even Fran Dresser point, points it out and goes, yeah, you probably shouldn't give him that interview because uh, it doesn't seem like you have your finger on the pulse of Hollywood. But anyway, a lot of these people are socialists who live in mansions in gated communities. And I think Variety magazine last year did an article on the um the water usage for like twenty people in Hollywood who have these, you know, big estates in California, which is in a drought, which is in a perpetual drought because the <laughs> the doors are wide open. It's like, so you're bringing in all these like high carbon footprint folks and like water usage folks and like all those people need resources but you already like don't have the water or the, the, how is that going to work exactly? It's like, oh, you're istophobic if you if you ask. Like, okay, ch challenge accepted then, but still, how's it going to work? Like, that's that's where we got you, bucko. It's not going to work. I don't know if I could say that last little bit on YouTube. I really wish I could edit these videos. I clipped that whole thing out. Anyway, um, so I looked at the water usage, and it was uh, it was nuts. So you had people using hundreds of thousands of gallons to water a lawn. 
on their on their you know California estate somewhere. It's like I thought you guys were environmentalists. Like no, we we take limousines to our private Gulf Stream jets to fly to you know fly across the country to go to go watch a movie somewhere. It's like ah yeah, that's all bullshit. Yeah, of course it is. Anyway, there um, a lot of these people are so deep in an echo chamber. They're just kind of well paid, useful idiots. But then you got an exec like like Iger who's making I don't know fifty million dollars a, a year. Or um, something ridiculous. So what if you took those people and then people like over ma- who are making over a certain amount of, of money, and um, then include the actors who are also like whatever like you can put a cap on this. Um, wh- whoever they're making like more than a few million dollars a picture. So if Hollywood really believes in these left wing values, like they lecture us on social media all the time, why don't they just put economic caps on salaries across the board? It seems like such an obvious solution. <laughs> that way you can pay everyone at the bottom more. It just it seems like the obvious uh, direction to go in. I assume eventually they'll come around <laughs> to this proposal. The thing is, <laughs> they're, they're listening to this like, have that person killed <laughs> immediately. <laughs> the thing is, they actually could socialize Hollywood. I, I mean, I mean, I know they're hardcore into... Um, uh, doing it at like a federal level for everyone else because they have the best tax attorneys on earth. They can hide their assets. But you could, this is something different. And what I'm suggesting is simply doing it at an industry level. And Hollywood is the perfect experiment for that because of how far left they, these people, these insane, insane people all claim to be. But, you know, like I said, it's like, yeah, you're far left from your, uh, your vacation home in Colorado. So they've got unions there uh, for everything, writers, actors, um, the set design, all that kind of stuff. You could easily guarantee minimum incomes for the people at the bottom if you're so, so concerned about them. And that's obviously not going to fly for many industries, but Hollywood is different. Most of them are openly far left. It's not like an insurance industry it gets on social media and it's like, oh yeah, the insurance industry is is insanely liberal and like their policies are out there. It's like it's only Hollywood that does this kind of stuff. And you, you know, like the fact that the fact that everyone gives Hollywood their energy and you, you, they give Hollywood the oxygen for them to be a, a trillion dollar industry. But the thing is, it would be a funny proposal to put something uh, like that out there. Just to see the hypocrisy when they they hear that, and if if they if, if there's a groundswell of interest in socializing the payment uh, of Hollywood, it's like let's eat the rich in Hollywood. Yeah, the top two percent of Hollywood, anyone who's making over two million dollars a year, let's uh, let's redistribute that wealth. Like, yeah, how come nobody suggests that? There's a lot of people in Hollywood making over two million dollars a year, but then you have you have people in Hollywood who are you know, living in uh, New York and L.A. who are barely making enough to get by. It's like, yeah, they, there's you guys could easily, easily pay them, uh, you know, whatever they need, like, uh, you know, another $50,000 a year, as long as you take it away from the people at the top. Anyway, um, yeah, they would, they would ask their parents, like, we're going we're gonna to set up uh, a new Hollywood in Italy, like so, wait! All this socialist stuff you guys talk about—you literally, you literally move Hollywood to a foreign, another country, just so you you don't have to pay people more. Like you, you damn right, Bucko. And they would, they absolutely would. Italy used to be um, fantastic for for films, especially the spaghetti westerns, because you had the Italians who would play every role. They would play the uh, the Indians, the Mexicans, and then the cowboys. <laughs> just uh, just throw a little bit of extra makeup on them. <laughs> Like, there's no political correctness back then. Gosh, those movies were absolutely fan freaking fantastic. You know, a movie like The Good, The Bad, and The Ugly, or, or you know, the, like those Clint Eastwood type of movies, and there's there's dozens more. You look back on that and you realize, like, yeah, you're never going to get movies like that again. Just movies that just do what they're supposed to do. Just tell a simple story very, very well. Instead, you get The Little Mermaid or... I'm trying to think, is there anything that compares to, like, one of those Clint Eastwood movies from the, the 60s or something? I just kind of don't think you're ever going to get that again. I don't. I think you're going to see a fundamental restructuring of Hollywood, which is fan freaking fantastic. Because if there is a delay in Hollywood, then you will see alternatives spring up. Um, what do you need? You need um, well, the production is easy, easy enough, depending on the budget. But the distribution and the monetization—that's when you enter. Um, alt social media platforms and the monetization is already in existence the big one would be twitter elon has uh, you know twitter videos up right now it's getting off the ground 
I don't think it's monetized yet, but that's obviously an easy thing to do. You could have subscriptions. You could do a bunch of stuff. Um, like Twitter could be the next big streaming video and it would be entirely outside of Hollywood. And um, it, that would, like, it would be, um, you would get a better diversity of thought. Because you look at Hollywood and you realize, yeah, that's all really far left. Like, you don't see, there's no... There's no like conservative viewpoints in Hollywood at all. You just don't get those kind of movies. Christian movies are very rare, and they have to come from Christian companies, and they distribute them themselves. But like Hollywood's obviously a very slanted perspective. If that changed, and, and Hollywood is the greatest uh, brainwashing propaganda tool, I think, known to man. So if that changed, many other things would change. Because suddenly you'd have people making movies that were as far right as Hollywood is far left. That would be fascinating. I'd be making my own movies out on uh, Twitter X. Anyway, um, so uh, Bob Iger does this interview, and he's saying, well, we can't just pay the writers more, except, of course, he's worth, uh, I don't know, half a billion dollars from his Disney paycheck and his, his, his stock holdings. They absolutely could pay everyone at the bottom more. Does somebody like Robert Downey Jr. really needed to make $65 million for that last Avengers movie? That, because that's the way the, um, the, the contract ramps up. You make so many movies in the contract and it just keeps going up and up. And the movie could definitely afford it. But you go, yeah, that's, that's ridiculous. You could, there's a ton of people who work on There's thousands of people working on that movie. And if you had someone who's, who's making $100,000, who's doing something on the set or some like kind of editing or something, yeah, why don't you just cap that salary, the, the writer, the... Um, uh, actor salary and just distribute that money. That's like it's the sound of the needle on the the record when they realize they have to have somebody assassinated. Um, the thing is, this uh, these Hollywood unions are in a unique position because of their public face of being so far left. Like obviously, that's all mostly bull bull ass. Once they um once they make a little bit of money, they suddenly turn um, inwardly very conservative. They still virtue signal. But, you know, it's like, that's, that's crap. They're not, they're not doing anything with that kind of stuff. But if they wanted to, if the unions really wanted to fundamentally change Hollywood, uh, if they found the balls to say, yeah, let's, as an experiment, let's socialize an industry that we have control over. And like, yeah, that seems like an obvious solution. It seems c- kind of weird that nobody has done it before. Probably because anyone who suggested it probably would get Epstein. I mean, people are not eager to lose lose uh, hundreds of millions of dollars and they, they view your life as having having no value anyway um you can click the links join channel here over subscribe so like i said if you want me to see a movie and review it pay for the movie and the ticket and i will and i'll give you a review on it and i'll see you guys all next episode